नमस्कार गुड इवनिंग व्यूअर्स यू वॉचिंग सनसर टी वी इज लाइव ब्रॉडकास्ट एट नाइन पी एम दिस इज द न्यूज विद मी भावना नैयर ओवर द नेक्स्ट थर्टी मिनट्स वी ब्रिंग यू द टॉप डिवेलपमेंट्स ऑफ द डे फ्रॉम अक्रॉस द वर्ल्ड फर्स्ट अप द हेडलाइंस दिस मंडे इवनिंग Presidential election concludes Prime Minister his cabinet colleagues and members of parliament cast votes in parliament house complex voting in state legislative assemblies counting of votes on July 21st NDA candidate Jagdeep Dhankar files paper for vice presidential election with senior NDA leaders and prime minister in attendance Margaret Alwa is the opposition candidate Monsoon session of parliament begins 28 newly elected members in Rajya Sabha and four in Lok Sabha took oath proceedings of both houses adjourned till Tuesday due to disruptions Self reliance all important for Indian armed forces of in the 21st century at the NIIO seminar Swalamban Prime Minister asserts that creating 75 indigenous technologies first step for navy and revised gst rates applicable from today higher rates on some items less on many others and now let us look at some more important news of the day in our flash segment prime minister narendra modi to interact with indian commonwealth games contingent on wednesday athletes and coaches to attend interaction आत्मनिर्भर भारत रोजगार योजना बेनिफिटेड 60 लाख पीपल एंड 1 लाख फिफ्टी थाउजेंड इस्टेब्लिशमेंटल टेंथ जुलाई लोकसभा टोल्ड नीति आयोग एंड वर्ल्ड फूड प्रोग्राम इंडिया टू लॉन्च इनिशिएटिव टू मेन स्ट्रीम यूज ऑफ मिलेट्स इन एशिया एंड अफ्रीका टुमोरो सिविल एविएशन मिनिस्टर ज्योतिरादित्य सिंधिया चेयर्स हाई लेवल मीट विद सीईओज ऑफ एयरलाइन कंपनीज एयरलाइन टोल टू रैंप अप सेफ्टी ओवरसाइट Centre calls all party meeting tomorrow to discuss Sri Lanka crisis. External Affairs Minister S J Shankar and Finance Minister Nirmala Sita Raman to chair the meeting. Vice President of Gambia, Badara A Zouf, arrives for five-day visit to India. Zouf will participate in CII Exim Bank Conclave 2022, among other bilateral engagements. Exports of agriculture and processed food products rise by 14% in first 3 months of financial year 23 over last year rice exports grow 13% dairy and poultry products by 9.5% Political uncertainty sees Pakistani rupee hit a low of 22 216 against US dollar Gunman in Indiana mall USA shoots kills 3 and injures 2 with a rifle in a food court armed civilian shoots gunman says police An England all-rounder Ben Stokes announces ODI retirement 2019 World Cup hero says playing three formats has become unsustainable for him And now news in detail voting to elect the new president of India concluded today NDA candidate Draupadi Murmu is facing opposition candidate Yashwant Sinha in the presidential election Returning officer PC Modi said 728 out of 736 eligible electors cast their votes at the parliament house today These include 719 MPs and 9 MLAs Across the state assemblies out of a total of 4796 electors over 99% cast their votes 100% voting has been reported from 11 states and union territory of Puducherry Prime Minister Narendra Modi was the first to cast his vote many union ministers and MPs also cast their vote to elect the next president of the country Senior opposition leaders including Congress president Sonia Gandhi cast their vote former prime minister manmohan singh and veteran samajwadi leader mulayam singh yadav arrived in wheelchair to cast their votes the term of office of president ramnath kovind is ending on 24th of july counting of votes will be held on july 21st seven 21 members of parliament and nine members of legislative assemblies cast their votes before closure of the poll that is 5 pm the total elector turnout at parliament house new delhi was accordingly 
99.18 percent. The counting of votes will take place in room number 63, first floor, Parliament House, on Thursday, the 21st of July 2022, from 11 a.m. onwards. NDA Vice Presidential Candidate and former West Bengal Governor Jagdeep Dhankar filed his nomination on Monday. Prime Minister Narendra Modi, Union Minister Amit Shah, Rajnath Singh, Nitin Gadkari and senior NDA leaders were present at his nomination. Calling it a historic opportunity, Dhankar said that he will always strive to enhance the democratic values of the country. Prime Minister Narendra Modi expressed confidence that Dhankar will be an excellent and inspiring Vice President. The opposition has named Margaret Alva as its candidate for the vice presidential election. भारत के लोकतंत्र के लिए ये एक मेजर माइलस्टोन मानता हूँ कि साधारण किसान का बेटा आज नॉमिनेशन कर कर आया है। You were listening to Jagdeep Dhankar. Monsoon session of parliament began amid noisy scenes on Monday with the opposition demanding discussion on issues ranging from price rise to the Agnipat scheme. Presiding over the last session at the close of his tenure, Rajya Sabha chairman M. Venkaya Naidu on Monday urged MPs to be different and better than they were in the last five years when 57% of house sitting were partly or fully disrupted. Naidu said that this is the last session in the 75th year of independence and MPs should give their best performance to make it a memorable one. Chairman Naidu's five-year term, five term as Vice President of India ends on 10th of August. This journey of five years has been a quite learning experience for me. Dealing with about 245 members of this August House from over 30 political parties with different minds, inclinations and political ideologies is quite revealing and even a testing experience. I try to do the best of my ability to draw the best of, out of all of you. This is the last session in the 75th year of our hard-fought independence and is being celebrated across the country. As in the case of all the last 13 sessions that I preside over, I would like to fervently appeal to all of you to give out your best performance to make this session a memorable one. Even as the chairman was making his remarks, opposition members from Congress, AAP and other raised protest on price rise and GST hike. MPs from left, DMK, Shiv Sena, RJD, NCP and others also joined in. Amid then, the House was adjourned for the day. The morning session of the Lok Sabha was adjourned till 2 p.m. to allow members to vote in the presidential election, even as opposition members tried to raise some issues. In the second half, the House was adjourned for the day as opposition continued protest over issues like price rise and Agnipat scheme. Law Minister Kiran Rijuju also introduced the Family Courts Amendment Bill in the Lok Sabha today. Moving on, Prime Minister Narendra Modi urged the MPs to make monsoon session productive and fruitful. He appealed to the members to make full use of this session in national interest. Addressing the media ahead of the session, Prime Minister urged all MPs to undertake deep thinking and discussion, adding that democracy and house function within everyone's efforts. He also reiterated that the period of the monsoon session is extremely significant as the nation is celebrating Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav. मैं सभी आदरणीय सांसदों से यही आग्रह करूंगा कि गहन चिंतन गहन चर्चा उत्तम चर्चा और सदन को हम जितना ज्यादा प्रोडक्टिव बना सके सदन को जितना ज्यादा फ्रूटफुल बना सके उस लिए सबका सहयोग हो और सबके प्रयास से ही लोकतंत्र चलता है Self-reliance in defence sector is crucial for India in the 21st century, Prime Minister Modi said on Monday. Addressing the Naval Innovation and Indigenization Organisation Seminar, Swalamban in New Delhi, Prime Minister Modi said the first step would be to create 75 indigenous technologies for the Indian Navy. He added that in the last eight years, the government has not only increased the defence budget, but also ensured development of defence manufacturing ecosystem in the country. Let's listen into what Narendra Modi has to say. In the last eight years, 
हमारा डिफेंस एक्सपोर्ट सात गुणा बढ़ा है अभी कुछ समय पहले ही हर देशवासी गर्व से भर उठा जब उसे पता चला कि पिछले साल हमारे तेरह हजार करोड़ रुपयों का डिफेंस एक्सपोर्ट किया है नाउ लेट्स टेक अ लुक एट सम मोर इंपॉर्टेंट न्यूज फ्रॉम द नेशन An army captain and a junior commissioned officer were killed in an accidental grenade blast along the line of control in Jammu and Kashmir's Punch district. The blast took place in the Mandhar sector where the troops were engaged in their duties along with the line of control. The Supreme Court collegium headed by Chief Justice N V Raman on Monday has reiterated his recommendation to promote five advocates to be the judges of Allahabad High Court. The second case of monkeypox in the country has been reported from Kannur district of Kerala. The victim is a 31-year-old man who reached the state from Dubai last week. He was found infected on arrival. Gujarat State Fertilizer and Chemicals closed two urea plants in Gujarat because of a leakage issue. The shutdown and restart sequence is estimated to cost 13 days of production. That is around 10,400 tons of neem urea. Joint security teams launched a search operation near the border area of Samba after a third drone was sighted in Jammu and Kashmir in two days. Security forces also deployed their drones in the operation to conduct extensive grid searches. And now news from the world of business and economy. New GST rates came into effect on many items on Monday. Some items have a higher rate while others have a lower rate. Exemption have been withdrawn on many items. The 47th GST Council meeting decided to change rates last month in Chandigarh. Check issue issuance charges in banks will be 18% GST. Hotel rooms costing up to rupees 1000 a day will have 12%. Solar water heaters will attract 12% GST instead of the earlier 5%. GST on EVs that were five percent will now be eighteen percent. No GST will be levied on unbranded food items like cereals, pulses, and twenty-five kilograms of flour. Moving on, in a written reply to the Lok Sabha, Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman stated that the RBI had expressed concern over cryptocurrencies and recommended legislation that would ban its use in India. She said that RBI felt that cryptocurrencies, because of their very nature of uncertainty, can have a destabilizing impact on the economy. Following the government's directive, Ahmedabad-based Adani Wilmer announced a cut of rupees 30 per liter in the price of cooking oils sold under its Fortune brand. The move comes after a drop in global oil prices over the past two months. India has emerged as the top lender to Sri Lanka this year as it battles with an unprecedented economic and political crisis with 377 million dollars of credit extended to the island nation between January and April this year. The Indian government has expressed its solidarity with the people of the island nation and assured all of them possible assistance. And talking about Sensex now, BSE Sensex jumped 760 points, while NSE Nifty also gained 230 points, with Indus End, Infosys, and Tech Mahindra among biggest gainers. Global markets were upbeat as stocks across US, Europe, and Asia rose by nearly 1%, while Kospi gained 1.9%, Shanghai gained 1.55%. Slipping into a short break here on the other side. Leadership race in Britain hots up. Opinion polls bet on Rishi Sunak. All this and much more on the other side of the short break. You stay tuned to Sunset TV. Sunset Yekar Rewahi se judi har khabar. वाले कामकाज का पूरा ब्यौरा दोनों सदनों में क्या होगा खास संसद में आज सोमवार से शुक्रवार सुबह 10 बजे
क्या आप किसी कानूनी समस्या से घिरे हैं नहीं पता क्या करें क्या कहता है कानून क्या है आपके अधिकार समझिए कानून की बारीकियों को कानून की पाठशाला में सिर्फ संसद टीवी पर संसदीय कार्यवाही से जुड़ी हर खबर होने वाले कामकाज का पूरा ब्यौरा दोनों सदनों में क्या होगा खास संसद में आज सोमवार से शुक्रवार सुबह 10 बजे Welcome back after the break you're watching the news and time now for all the big developments from the Russia Ukraine war front Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky fired his state security chief Ivan Bakanov and prosecutor general Irina Venedik Tova late on Sunday he said that many cases had emerged of members of their agencies collaborating with Russia European Union foreign ministers are meeting today to discuss tightening the sanctions on Russia. They will also focus on ways to add a ban on gold exports, which is Moscow's second largest export industry after energy. Last month, the G7 nations already committed to a gold ban. The 27 ministers will also assess how they can tighten controls on exports of high technology to Russia and plans to boost military aid to Ukraine. Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu inspected the work of Vostok Battalion involved in the special military operation in Ukraine. He gave instruction on priority destruction of enemy long-range missiles and artillery with high-precision weapons. Russia is using these weapons to shell residential areas in the Donbas and grain storage facilities. Six people have been killed by Russian shelling in the town of Toresk in eastern Ukraine's Donetsk region. Ukraine State Emergency Service said that five bodies have been retrieved from the rubble of a two-story house while one person succumbed to injuries in the hospital. Donetsk and Luhansk made up Ukraine's eastern Donbas region where Russia has focused its offensive right now. And time now for some other global updates. Sri Lanka declared a state of emergency according to a government notice on Sunday that said that it is necessary in the interest of public security and the maintenance of essential supplies and services. Meanwhile, dozens of protesters gathered at a railway station in Colombo on Monday to protest against interim president Ranil Wickremesinghe. Now, what lies ahead for the future of Sri Lanka? Take a look at this report. Acting President Ranil Wickremesinghe declared a state of emergency in Sri Lanka. giving him broad authority amid growing protests demanding his resignation two days before the country's lawmakers are set to elect a new president wickremesinghe's move comes as protests demanding his resignation have continued in most parts of the country with some protesters burning his effigy the emergency decree invokes sections of the public security ordinance that allow regulations in the interests of public security the preservation of public order the suppression of mutiny riot or civil commotion or for the maintenance of essential supplies lawmakers who met on saturday began the process of electing a new leader to serve the rest of the term abandoned by rajpaksha nominations for the election of the new president will be heard on tuesday and if there is more than one candidate the lawmakers will vote on wednesday sri lanka has run short of money to pay for imports of basic necessities like food fertilizer medicine and fuel for its 22 million people Its rapid economic decline has been all the more shocking because before the crisis the economy had been expanding with a growing comfortable middle class. Bureau report Sunset TV. Moving on, the UK will have its new prime minister on 5th of September. The race for 10 Downing Street has narrowed down. Opinion polls in UK are betting on Rishi Sunak to win the MP's election in the Tory party leadership battle to be Britain's first prime ministerial candidate. All eyes are on now who will be the second candidate standing against him. More details in this report. You have raised taxes. On Sunday, the, the candidates in the race to succeed Boris Johnson underscored their right-wing credentials to become the next British Prime Minister. 
The five hopefuls use the television debates to criticize and challenge each other's track records. Ahead of a third round of voting on Monday, most of them highlighted the issues linked to Brexit and immigration as they attempted to woo fellow conservative lawmakers. Through voting, the candidates will be narrowed down to two. Before facing a runoff among an estimated 1,80,000 Conservative Party members. Former Treasury Chief Rishi Sunak found himself defending his line on taxation while being attacked for not recovering more funds issued to fraudsters through the pandemic financial assistance schemes. Trade Minister Penny Mordaunt was forced to challenge accusations that she pushed through a policy to end the requirement for trans people to obtain a medical diagnosis before they could legally change gender. Despite the demographics, the race to succeed Johnson has been the most diverse for a British Prime Minister. Sunak and Kemi Bentonok, a former qualities minister, are both non-white, while the other three are all women. Bentonok, whose parents are from Nigeria, she has seen her star rise after her public showing in a television debate on Friday. Liz Truss, the Foreign Secretary, is promising a tough line with the European Union in post-Brexit trade spats. The final candidate, Tom Tugendhat, never sat in Boris Johnson's government. Bureau Report, Sunset TV. And more news from across the world now. France commemorated the 80th anniversary of the infamous 1942 raids in which leaders of France took part in the Holocaust. Over two days on July 16th and 17th that year, police herded 13,152 people, including 4,115 children, into Nazi camps. French President Macron on Sunday inaugurated a new memorial site honoring the deportees as he paid homage to the thousands who were sent to death camps 80 years ago. America was rocked by yet another shooting incident on Monday. Three people were fatally shot and two injured at an Indiana mall when a man with a rifle opened fire in a food court. The gunman was shot dead by a 22-year-old armed civilian who was legally carrying a firearm. The shooter began firing in the food court with a rifle and several rounds of ammunition. Protesters in Hungary opposed recent changes to the country's tax code. Made up largely of food delivery, couriers on bicycles and scooters, they blocked the traffic in both directions on one of the Budapest's main bridges over the Danube River. Demonstrators believe that legislative changes passed last week by Hungary's parliament will result in major tax hikes or a loss of work. China confirmed the arrival of combo of a space station lab module and a carrier rocket at its launch site. The lab module will go through various function checks and joint tests before its scheduled launch in late July. Another module scheduled for an October launch will complete in orbit construction of Chinese space station that will reassemble a T-shaped complex. 16,200 people were forced to evacuate by two huge forest fires that consumed pine forests in southwestern France. In, in Londi Gas, firefighters tried to control the blaze by dumping white sand. Another fire in Gihon region forced 10,000 people to evacuate. The regional government blamed gusting winds that fanned the flare ups overnight. The two fires burned over 100 square kilometers. And from all the global news to now see what's happening in the world of sports. Veteran Sports Administrator Narendra Batra has resigned as President of International Hockey Federation, FIH, and also gave up his membership of the International Olympic Committee. Rishabh Pant's maiden ODI century and Hardik Pandya's all-round heroics fired India to an emphatic five-wicket win over England in the series, deciding third ODI played in Manchester. India won the series 2-1. Sri Lanka were 329 for nine in the second innings at the end of day three of first test of the two match series being played in goal. The home team have an overall lead of 333 runs. Australian Cameron Smith won golf's oldest tournament 
The 150th British Open at the game's oldest course at St Andrews winning his first major title. Shelly and Fraser Price won a record fifth World 100 meter title in Eugene, Oregon, leading an unprecedented Jamaican clean sweep of the podium. Sherika Jackson took silver and Ilan Thompson bronze. And a quick relook at the headlines before we wrap the bulletin. Presidential election concludes. Prime Minister, his cabinet colleagues and members of parliament cast votes in parliament house complex. Voting in state legislative assemblies, counting our votes on July 21st. NDA candidate Jagdeep Dhankar has filed papers for vice presidential election with senior NDA leaders and prime minister in attendance. Margaret Alva is the opposition candidate. Monsoon session of parliament begins. 28 newly elected members in Rajya Sabha and 4 in Lok Sabha to court. Proceedings of both houses adjourned till Tuesday due to disruptions. Self-reliance, all important for Indian armed forces off in the 21st century. At the NIIO seminar Swalamban, Prime Minister asserts that creating 75 indigenous technologies, first step for Navy. And revised GST rates applicable from today. Higher rates on some items, less on many others. And that's all we have in today's news. For more updates, keep watching Sunset TV. Thank you for watching. Good night. Namaskar.